And we're live. Hello, everyone. Mm -mm -mm. Gonna give people a few minutes before I start talking. Can you say hi? Can you say hello? I don't know how it works on the computer. I've only ever done it on my phone, but we'll see. Can you say hi? Hmm. We should be live. Let's check. Okay, good. At least I know someone's there. Hey, Yolanda. Hey, Kenya. The squad is here. Can you say hi? Yeah, I want to say hi. Tandy is joining me for now. Thank you for sharing the video. And bye. Yo, friends. We have a special guest today. Tandy with. She'll be leaving as soon as her dad gets here, but she's going to be here for now. Just going to give it a few more minutes and let other people hop on. I know a few people expressed interest and have a few questions, so I'm excited. I know, right? I figured she's the one who inspired my my interest in minimalism so it only fits that she's here <laughs> Yolanda this is an ode to you I'm drinking water probably another minute or two so far we've only had one question but a bunch of people have just expressed interest in just knowing how to start come here and knowing how to start so hi Tawi. i hope i'm saying it right come here come here sweet pea Okay. I, you know, I think I'm just going to start. And did I say yes, I did. Yay. I'm good at saying names because I'm used to people messing up my name. <laughs> All right. So today, oh my, we have another visitor. Um, today we're going to be talking about minimalism with children and so the first thing that I like to tell people when they talk to me about minimalism this is Duke y'all <laughs> the first thing that I like to tell people about minimalism is that you need to reject that idea of I don't know that cookie cutter idea of that minimalism looks like mm -hmm. That minimalism looks like one certain thing. For, minimalism looks like different things for people. It's tailored to whatever your family needs. So what is the most fulfilling part of being a minimalist mama? Um, I think the simplicity of knowing that, I don't know, that, hmm, yeah, that's a good question. The most fulfilling part of being a minimalist mama. Huh. I guess just knowing that I'm providing a simple but fulfilling life for my child. I also, I really love not having a bunch of toy clutter. Um, I'm what my brother-in-law calls a savage when it comes to gifts and stuff. Um, my family now knows, but in, in the beginning, you know, people are excited. They're having a kid and they're gifting you with a bunch of stuff and it may and I was like really because I decided that I was going to be a minimalist even before I had her and so oh, you're so fussy um and I decided so I knew I had a plan I knew what I wanted for her I knew what I didn't want for her and so I 
everything that came into like the day af the day of my baby shower, I got a bunch of gifts and I had there was a pile. There was a this works. This is not. This will not work for my family. This will not work for my family. And what didn't got either donated or um or given to those in you know someone else who could use it, and. I and I didn't I let go of that kind of sense of obligation that we have to keep things um, that our loved ones give us the when they give us with um, you know with kindness in their heart but it doesn't really fit into my life and my aesthetic I just really want my child to have a childhood like to play and and to not be consumed by um, toys and advertisements and marketing so I think that's the most fulfilling part is just the simplicity that it brings to her to her life to my life I can clean her room in under a minute and so that's my favorite thing except right now she's in this phase where she likes to throw things around so it, it takes a little bit longer now because I have to travel to all corners of the room to pick stuff up but yes I think the simplicity is the most um, the most fulfilling thing. So yeah, like I was talking about before, thank you for that question. Um, minimalism really, to me, looks different for everyone. And so if you are approaching the idea of minimalism with your children, whether you are expecting, whether you are already have your kids, you have to kind of think about, yeah, exactly, right? I, almost all every room in my house I can clean under five minutes now, except for the bathroom. I don't know what is wrong with that place but yeah anyway I really think that you have to address what it is you want what you what you want different is it you want more time with your kids is it you want to be able to clean the room under five minutes you have to think about what goals you have for your children what type of experience that you want them to have what type of childhood you want them to have and then use that minimalism use minimalism to kind of tailor your life so one of the ways that I think for me like I said one of the things that I wanted that was really important for my child was that I wanted her to have a childhood so often children are inundated with advertisements and marketing and they want this toy and that toy and hatch animals and I know that this past Christmas it was nuts the advertising um, and so I just really wanted her to and I grew up in in Botswana in Zimbabwe so I'm I feel like I, I had a blessed experience that I spent a lot of my time outside and I just really wanted that for her because I don't see that for um, some of the children, some of the children that I know and I really wanted that for my daughter so I felt like minimalism kind of helped me sieve through and keep what I wanted and chuck out everything else. So um, yeah minimalism encourages simplicity that's the first thing that I think and then one of the ways that you can be a minimalist is rejecting consumerism right so that looks like gadgets um, just crappy little plastic toys that break real easy that, um, that have like a I don't know an expiration date like you know they're a fad for the next six months and then something better or cooler the 2.0 version of it comes out so I really think about um, when I'm be when I'm getting toys for her I'm real conscious of what kind of toys them that am I bringing into her life whether or not they last whether or not they have you know any educational benefits or whatever I'm really against buying just garbage really being mindful of the toys and let me not say that because one man's garbage is another man's treasure but I'm really conscious about making sure that the toys that I bring into her life um, they're well made they um, and and yeah they're not trash <laughs> for lack of a better word um, the next thing that I do is I think about clutter I think about you know when you bring something into your space you're responsible you're paying rent for it it's yours now so I whenever I buy something whenever I bring something into my house I am wondering you know where am I gonna put this where what is this gonna look like I I'm in 
so I moderate this group called Minimalists of Color, and I'm always talking about my aesthetic. I have an aesthetic, and when I'm buying stuff, because, you know, you live in your space, and you want it to be beautiful. You have these experiences that you wanted, so I'm real conscious about the aesthetic of her room. I have an idea. Um, her room is, like, Montessori-themed, and so I know, I know what I want her space to look like. I know what I want her to get out of it. I think my husband's home. And so it's really, really, really important that I watch what I that I watch what I'm bringing in. And then another thing that I think about is replacing um, gadgets with experiences because they like the kids will remember experiences a lot more than they'll like remember gadgets unless it's something that you really that you know that was really really meaningful to you. Um, I remember I wanted this castle toy um, when I was a kid. I wanted it so bad. Hold on one second. Tony? You got her? Okay. Um, yeah, I really wanted this, like, castle toy. And, oh, my God, I had to have it because I saw the ad on TV. And then as soon as I got the freaking um, castle, I, I was not as enamored with it as I was when I saw it on TV. So being conscious of that because, you know, kids are marketed too heavily. I was doing research before this, and the American Psych Psychological Association, I'm not gonna say that right, they said that children are exposed to 40,000 commercials in a year, 40,000. So they're seeing all kinds of toys and gadgets and movies. Um, I had my nephew here the other day, and he was watching Nickelodeon, and every single like ad break on the TV show had two to three commercials for toys and I was how can he not want all those things because they look I wanted them they looked cool they're bright they were shiny and so just really really being conscious of giving them experiences as opposed to gadgets because those experience those gadgets you know they're short-lived whereas experiences live forever live forever another thing that I wanted to say about experiences people get caught up in the gift shop you know, when you go to aquariums or zoos, they have, like, the mascot animal. And those are other trappings. I understand that they, I don't know, they may fund those places, but they're really trappings. Maybe I suggest getting maybe, like, a sticker for a sticker book for experiences. I feel like that's a lot more fun than, and that's more meaningful because they can look at the sticker and they can remember, oh, well, when we went to the aquarium, we saw this and this and this and that. And then just kind of not always getting caught up in that um, consumerism. Um, also, English is not my first language, so if I stutter, I apologize. The next thing that I also think when I'm talking about experiences is children need to play. And Anika, oh, so let me tell you guys a little bit. I didn't even introduce myself. So my name is Farai. I am also known as the Hillbilly African um, online, and I am one of the co-founders of Black Minimalists along with Kenya and Anika and then Yolanda, who is the OG founder. She typically does these. Um, Anika is a, works with children, and Kenya is a spiritual guru person, but Anika um, sent me some of her ideas to work on, to kind of share with you guys, because she has over six years experience working with kids. And one of the things that she recommended, you know, was being outside with your children, being outside, playing, getting dirty. I was already down for that because I, you know, that whole stereotype of how new moms don't let their kids, like, the, they, they shelter their newborns and then they kind of let, like, once they have more and more kids, they're more um, relaxed with letting them go outside. I'm not like that. I let her go outside. I let her play. She's She gets naked time outside. She gets dirty. I think when children get to connect with the earth and, you know, get their feet in the ground, play with grass, play with dirt, play with sand, it really, really, really connects them to to being mindful, to, you know, to being stewards of the earth. And, you know, not everyone feels that way, but it's definitely something that resonates with me. And I think uh, Anika uh, agreed with me. I'm going to share this quote from Charlotte Mason um, that I had on my Facebook. But she said, we, are, we were all meant to be naturalists, each in his own degree, and it is inexcusable to live in a world so full of the marvels of plant and animal life and to care for none of these things. So I think children um, 
they have more rich childhood experiences when they get to go outside carefree black babies hey christy that's my friend right there um we they have more meaningful experiences when they step away from the tv when they step away from the ipad and they go outside and that's easier said than done because i know you know parents get busy and it's a privilege to be able to um you know to watch your children and and to give and to kind of take away that screen time and and i'm really cognizant of that because not everyone can do that yolanda says being outside is the source of some of her greatest memories as a child mine too mine too um so i really believe that um I'm losing my train of thought here. Yeah, being outside, taking your kids outside is really, really important. Um, um, Anika said that le letting kids play outside aids in their development, and I agree. They learn um, troubleshooting. They learn, you know, building. They learn about plants. I think it's really, really important. For me, I, what, one of my passions is women. My next passion is um, children, especially women of color, children of color, and I think it's really, really important that they that they're connected. I had this thought earlier just about I know it happened where I'm from, and I know that it also happened here in the U.S. about kind of like the urbanization um, of people of color. They were kind of pushed into the ghettos and pushed into um, industrialized areas, and they were kind of taken away from you know the land that they had that. For well, in, in my case, poison ivy every summer growing up for me, also playing in the woods, the creek with crawdads. Oh my God, I'm terrified of poison ivy. I am terrified. And I had to make my husband come out with a blowtorch and like burn it whenever see, we see it in our yard. So, ouch. I've never had it. Fingers crossed I never do. Um, but yeah, just, you know, people of color were kind of pushed away from... Um, the wild they were pushed away from the woods they were pushed into the ghettos into the slums and they kind of almost well not everyone but some of them lost touch with nature and and so i think it's really really important to kind of rediscover that part of ourselves and my, another thing that i like about nature and exploring is that it allows children to be mindful it allows them to stay in the moment it allows them to um I don't know, it, it makes them calmer almost. I know it makes me calm, so can you imagine what it does for an itty bitty child who is still learning their life, who's still learning their emotions? I, whenever Tandi falls out, I always say, you know, you have these big emotions and you don't know how to handle them yet. So I'm, I'm always saying, well, you have so many emotions, I'm so sorry. So yeah, I feel like being outside really helps with that. Um, so now we're gonna talk about screen time so minimizing screen time is really important let's see hi Adrian hi Vivian yeah okay so minimizing screen time is really important and it kind of encouraging children to rediscover those things that you know like that, that we used to do when we were kids so I don't have a DVD player in my car sometimes I wish I did because it would probably make my life a lot easier but I don't um, what I give her are things right now she's into books which is really weird because she just turned one she can't read but she loves to look at the pictures but books will just keep her occupied um, I saw at Target the other day they had, and these are, you can make these on your own if you're skilled. They have, they're called like busy books. It's like a felt book with things that you can do and color and make and create. But just kind of it, that, that making your child create with their hands, being more mindful, more present. Those things are really, really important to me. Vivian says, Tawi, what are crawdads? Daddy long legs. Yeah, those, aren't those like some type of big ass shrimp or something? <laughs> No idea. Um, daddy long legs. Ooh. I thought a daddy long legs was a spider. Crawfish. There you go. That answers that. Okay. So yeah, there's tons of stuff that children can do instead of screen time. And another big thing about minimalism with children is that 
I was listening to this podcast the other day. It's called Something to Cry About. It's by these two black women. It's hilarious. They were talking about how they remember growing up when their parents would tell them to do something, but their parents wouldn't do it themselves. So they would they would talk the talk, but they wouldn't walk the walk. And so that kind of made them bitter, right? About And it kind of made them jaded. So when it comes to minimalism, you have to be prepared to walk the walk with your children and talk the talk. So if you're expecting some, you know, minimize screen time or you're expecting you know more activities outside or whatever minimalism looks like for you and your family maybe it is just cleaning up toys and you know that's where it stops for you then you have to put your money where your mouth is you if you if it's out if you're going to be outside with your kids then you need to put your phone down you need to be present you need to be getting dirty you know i had this thing when i first had my daughter i was i kind of just assumed that kids would play by themselves i don't know if that's just me but you need to play with them they need to engage especially if they're an only child yeah do as I say not as I do right yeah I had that so much drove me nuts but getting down there getting dirty with them playing with them is so important so you can't and you got to watch your kids these days anyway but um yeah so walking the walk if you're expecting your child you know if you you're gonna shove all their toys into one room and like go through them with them then you need to be there with them and you also need to get over, get rid of whatever color that you have it's hypocritical of you to expect them you know to give up things that they may be attached to even though they're not really attached to them you know how kids are with their toys when you have a giant collection of i don't know dvds or handbags or i don't know designer watches that you don't ever touch you know um really walking the walk hey christy so really walking children is really important i feel like consumerism has made children attached to to things and so i do toy rotation with my daughter and she it's worked really well where she plays with certain toys for a little bit and then when i kind of see her losing interest in them i put them away and then I bring I bring out more toys, like a different set of toys, and she plays with those for a little bit. And then I bring back the other set, and it's like, oh, more toys. It's so fun. Like, new ones, but they're not really new. They're the ones that she had. Just kind of teaching them to take care of what they have. And also that, you know, they don't need much. Children really don't need much. They can play with anything. They can play make-believe with anything. I had – I never um, – I never had like the crazy, you know, kitchen set, even though I really want one for her because I love miniature things, you know, like miniature pots and pans and stoves and all t all things tiny and cute. I never had those. I just played make believe with I remember playing with like a corn cob as a doll and I and I loved that thing until it fell apart. So children really don't need much. But just it in, inciting their imagination, exciting them and engaging with them, I feel like is way more beneficial to them than any gadget or toy would. Um, yeah, let me see what else. Am I talking too fast? I tend to talk fast. It is 6.24. All right, I'm going to have a sip of water. Do y'all have any questions? Any other questions? Um, one, The one question that we did have, this one lady said she was – she felt a guilt about taking away toys from her children or taking away gifts. Um, and honestly speaking, get rid of the guilt. Just take some, take a four breath count in and then exhale a six, six count breath out because really your, your child lives in, and I'm going to sound like, um, this like a strict parent here but the child lives under your roof you're responsible for their toys yes it's there but you know you have to teach your child um things like i'm looking for the english word for it you have to teach your child responsibility you have to teach your child um what it looks like to i don't know i don't even think make sacrifices is the word but really what I'm trying to say is when you shouldn't feel guilty about getting rid of toys. What is the coolest thing you have upcycled or reused for her? 
Hmm. So um, I'm going to talk about this again, but most of Tandi's stuff is secondhand. Um, when it comes to clothing, when it comes to toys, because children outgrow so much stuff so quickly. Um, I guess the coolest thing, I love all the little baby things that I get her. Our neighbor had, um, he had a jungle gym in his yard that he had when his kids were younger. And this thing is old, it's ancient. And we were gonna buy it from him. I reached out to him and I was like, hey, I know you're getting ready to sell your house. Do you want this? Can we buy it from you? And he was like, y'all can have it. And he gave it to us. I mean, this thing is massive. It can fit me in it. And he brought it over into our yard by ourselves. And we've been working on it slowly, but surely we added a, like an itty bitty kitty swing that we found off of the Facebook marketplace for like $10. Um, my husband's been replacing the kind of rotted out board slowly but surely and he built a sandbox in there the other day it has a hammock swing in it and then we're trying to find um, a slide for it but like I said we're doing things really cheaply secondhand free and so I think that's probably the coolest big thing and that I can't wait till she's old enough to play with um, but most of her toys, I like. I love her water table. We got that one secondhand. Most of her clothing is hand-me-downs from my friends who have older kids. And then when she outgrows them, I pass them down to my friends' kids too. So we underestimate. So Anika says, really, it's all about the process. We underestimate how receptive children are. If you teach them about giving away their toys from the lens of showing gratefulness, empathy for others in need, uh, etc children do lack onto these concepts invite them into the process have a discussion with them yes i completely yeah broadcast interrupted by my dog dude um yeah i completely agree anika um children they see everything that you do and so it's really important that that you're honest with them and so i didn't really answer that lady's question yet but when she talked about feeling that guilt you shouldn't feel guilt you should bring your children into the conversation and talk to them about, hey, this is why we're getting, you know, we're gonna go through your toys and kind of get ready to donate some of these or get ready to sell some of these. You can even, you know, give the incentive that, you know, we can sell these at a secondhand store and then the money that we that we get, maybe we can save this and go to the zoo or we can go to the park or something fun, but involving them, getting them involved and explaining to them why, you know, we're going through their toys explain to them why you're interested in this minimalism because you know you're telling me you know i want more experiences or we really don't have enough room for these toys or you're really not playing um with these toys enough and i i have a friend whose son um he's a foster kid and so he has a lot of trauma surrounding possessions and so he he forgets about toys, but he, she can't really go through her thing, his things when he's there because he finds a use for every little thing. So she gets rid of it when he's not there. And that works because he doesn't remember, <laughs> but he's younger. So, you, you know, when you're when you have an older child, you really do need to have that conversation with them. So that's one of the things that I encourage Kenya, if, not Kenya, I'm sorry, Anika, if you have anything else you want to add to that, I'd appreciate it. Um, What? All right, am I back on? Someone give me a yes or a no. Hello. Let me check real quick. Yes, okay, good. It said broadcast interrupted. Um, so one of the things that you can do is identify what is, you know, what brings joy, what works, and with your child, and then what doesn't. Like I said, give it away, donate it, sell it. There's so many meaningful things that you can do in your community. You can give back. I know for what I do is I donate to the local domestic violence shelter that we have in my area because oftentimes kids are, you know, when they're when they leave a violent situation, they have nothing. And so kind of talking to your child about that, there's other 
other amazing things that you can give to, but just kind of, you know, letting them know that they are less fortunate and you're helping people when you do this. I will say, don't donate trash. Donate something that, you know, that is in good condition, that isn't raggedy. I used to work and so many in that field and so many times people would donate straight garbage. I know Vivian knows what I'm talking about. So um, another thing is don't buy into fads. Avoid TV and marketing. Um, if And, you know, monitor. There's apps that you can, if, you know, if you can't, Shannon, hey, um, if you can't, necessarily cut down on screen time with your children as much as you would like to monitor what they're watching blog ads and blog advertising or try to find um good stuff for them to watch like i i, I strictly stay to pbs because er, number one my, my my daughter's still young so daniel tiger is her world and you know daniel tiger is wholesome and there's no advertising and so look for wholesome television i do though i recommend is kind of doing like a tv and tech detox i um i had it written down here but um just yeah tv detox sugar detox tech detox just kind of stepping away from those things you know um that that take up a lot of your time and, 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 you know, talk to your children about why you're doing it. Have a sit down with them. Like Anika said, children, um, you, we underestimate how receptive they are. Talk to them, you know, I feel like we spend too much time watching TV. I feel like we spend too much time. Um, just give them examples of what you want to do and get down and dirty with them, play with them. So I think that's really important. Um, the next thing that I would suggest is you know, consumerism teaches attachment to objects. So we're t taking them outside and using their creativity or inside using, you know, give them a project to make something with their hands. I know parents that only allow their children to watch TV shows on Netflix. They don't even have cable. Yeah, that's awesome. She doesn't get access to electronics with the screen, which I think is really great. And I respect you for that. My oldest has to have it and I hate it. Yeah, well, um, I think um, Netflix is a really good, really good way of, of, you know, of kind of, yeah, monitoring what your children watch. And Netflix has Netflix kids. And so I, I really like Netflix for that. Shannon, I really think that when you're saying she doesn't get access to electronics, yeah, you mean, you mean my daughter, yeah. But she's getting slick. She sees my phone and she tries to, like, um you know, kind of wiggle with the screen, like children are so, I read this study that said that children in the United States as early as 11 months are learning how to use electronic gadgets. They may not know, they can't read, but they know how to press the apps and work and, you know, and make it work and do what they needed to do from what they see us doing. So maybe Shannon, a tech detox would work in your favor. I know for your little boy, there's some other factors that affect that. And so, but tech detoxes work and just walk them through. This is why, you know, you're not going to have your tablet for a week, for a month. And you're also, you should probably shouldn't be on your phone for, in that period when you're with them too. And just be in the now. And I know that you guys go outside a lot. I know that you guys connect with nature a lot. So there's a balance. I think it's unrealistic to expect children to not be, um, I mean, that would be the goal, hey, but there's a balance and you need to find that. I definitely think that the balance should be in favor of less screen time to no screen time. Screen, Anika says screen time is unavoidable as children get older, especially as schools rely more on the computer-based homework assignments. But I think it is still possible to limit how much time that is spent in front of the screen. And that's all that matters. Yeah, there, yeah. so there is finding a balance. Um, so like I said, the busy books, right? Busy books instead of, instead of screen time. Um, I think those are great. Um, 
So going outside, learning eco-friendliness, investing in the planet that they live in, I think is really important. So in Montessori, they have this like little stand and it's basically a cool wooden looking step stool that kind of holds the child in. But engage, and you set it next to you maybe when you're washing dishes or when you're cooking. I wouldn't do it when you're cooking something you know, like fried chicken where it's splattering you everywhere. Um, but, or maybe cutting vegetables or cutting fruit, but it kind of puts your child right there with you. I think that we should be investing children. When I'm outside working in my garden, my daughter is outside with me. When I'm washing dishes right now, it's unavoidable. She's on my back typically, but she sees what I'm doing. And then once she's older, I'm going to get that stool and she's going to be standing there right next to me. I'll, she'll probably have her own little sponge and her own little plastic dish that she can wash. Well, not plastic, but bamboo because we don't avoid, because we don't use plastic products. But, you know, something non-breakable that she can kind of engage because children learn. So really in, in encouraging them to, to invest in their life. I've seen so many stories of children who especially for my homeschool friends who homeschool their kids or for children who um who are engaged in montessori or unschooling or they they are really the children the children tend to be super entrepreneur minded they're like they're always thinking of things that they can do ways that they can make money um lemonade stands face painting stands like just letting them know that they can do whatever they they set their minds to yes yes you know shannon your little boy is obsessed with helping he he's so sweet when i was pregnant he was trying to forever help me it didn't always work out great but it was so sweet and so yeah just children love to do things they love to feel you know accomplished so give them involve them in your life um involve them in things i remember and i hated this when i would see you know young girls being taught you know no you need to come in you need to cook you need to clean i don't know if this is a, just an african thing but we kind of and whereas the boys just got to go outside and play engage your children of all sexes in housework engage your children in you know, in all types of sports and games or whatever it is that works for you. But I feel like minimalism creates spaces for those because it, it encourages parents to be mindful. So really um, teaching them to invest in the planet, teaching them where their food comes from, teaching them, you know, how the food that they're putting in their stomach, how they, um, how, how it was made you know walking them through the process they they benefit from that they learn from that they thrive with that um then other then so another point that i have was don't do everything for your kids empower them um empowerment is a big deal so my daughter is already empowered she's <laughs> we, we do baby led weaning and from the the time that she could hold a spoon she wants to hold her spoon and feed herself and that has made her eating experience so much more easier for me it's a lot messier but i don't have to sit there and feed her and then feed me you know and then eat myself i said her when we eat she eats she puts food in her own mouth she knows how to do it so and you know and she feels proud of herself you can tell that she enjoys the process so kind of giving them their power back and is really important and then another thing that we have was with minimalism you know rejecting that consumerist ideology and becoming okay with hand-me-downs and secondhand things I know for a lot of people that's a little bit difficult depending on their background and their life experience, but really children outgrow things so quickly. They outgrow clothes and toys and toys are expensive, especially if you are supposed, Tawi says we have the best experience with baby led weaning. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. Um, you, back to my point about the hand-me-downs, children outgrow stuff. There's no reason to buy. Um, there's no reason to buy stuff brand new. I do when it comes to toys. I search. I search online. I search on. There's apps like Kidizen. There's things like eBay. There's 
buy sell trades on your local Facebook or Lego. There's so many things that you can find. So a majority of her stuff is secondhand. There's secondhand clothing stores. But then if you do have to buy something, um, maybe something cool or whatever, um, that you, that you know that you can't find secondhand, support a local small business or support um, a black business, support a woman business. Um, you know, put your money where your mouth is, put your money back into communities that are important to you. I do that as much as I can. And, you know, I've, a lot of my conversation has been kind of tailored to little children because that's my experience. But I also think that it's never, even if you have older children, it's not too late to. Tawi is a the owner of Eco Baby Shop. She I'm so excited to um, start working with her, but you guys should check out her website. She's got the cutest stuff. If you have kids, if you um, if you want to buy stuff for your kids, or Anika, when you have kids one day, um, <laughs> you know. So, like I said, there um, it's really, really important, even if you have older kids, to sit them down and talk to them. You know, things there's going to be a change around here, and excuse me. Um, and talk to them talk to them about why talk to them don't just start doing things but engage with them whether that is showing them a documentary about minimalism showing them youtube videos um and talk to them about hey you know these this is what i want for our life this is kind of why i want minimalism and um and i think that well you don't even have it, this is what's going these are the changes that we're going to be making in our household and these are the reasons why and explaining it to them is really really important we're at 642 okay so i think when you yeah in order to to for your children to not be resentful they have to be a part of the process especially if they're you know older kids they have to be a part of the process and like i said putting your money where your mouth is walking that walk talking that talk um getting out there with them getting dirty with them playing with them some of my favorite experiences with my dad were us outside doing stuff making even if we weren't outside in the house making stuff my dad was a big crafter and maker and builder and i do and i make stuff i'm not i can't bake so i make and so so many times like for her birthday i made flower crowns for uh, everyone and you know once she's older I don't oh, I don't know what other traditions that you know I may make with her but in making stuff with if you can sew sew something with your children if you can paint paint something if you can glue glue something with them just you know getting back into being with them being away from the TV. Another big thing is don't have TVs in their room, in their bedrooms. Matter of fact, don't have a TV in any room other than the living room. I wish we could live without a TV, but my husband is not quite there yet. Um, but yeah, just just re remove the tech time. Read, read with them. Read books. Go on nature walks. There's so many things that you can do with your children that don't involve technology and gadgets and toys. And there's so many amazing resources. Um, Yolanda gave me the idea to kind of compile some on that, some minimalist families, you know, that have kids into like a list that we can share with you guys that you can go and pull different ideas from. If you guys know of any bloggers or YouTube channels, please comment, you know, that are minimalist or, and you know, do awesome stuff. Please share them in the comments with other people to look for inspiration because one of my favorite things about this community is that we inspire each other. And I think that's really important. Um, do you guys have any other questions regarding children and minimalism? Um, yeah. I have spoken a lot. I'm going to look over my notes while I wait for you guys to ask me more questions. Yeah, I talked about um, avoiding fads, TV, and marketing. It's so easy to get swooped up into that. I don't know if any of you guys watched Moana. I love that movie so much. And when it came on Netflix, my heart was 
overjoyed and then i was like you know tani's gonna dress up as moana for halloween and i'm gonna get her the moana baby doll like in my head i was ready and then i was like she doesn't really need a moana doll she if i want if you know she really doesn't need to dress like moana for halloween if i really want her to dress as moana for halloween it would probably be more meaningful if i made that costume and remembered the process for her as opposed to just going to Target or Walmart or Party America and buying that that cheaply made, probably made by another child in China or Taiwan or something like that and put that on her. So just being mindful of those purchases and kind of getting away from that cycle of consumerism is so important. Being caught being conscious of the things that we put on our children, in our children. Um, is really important too. And I think that minimalism kind of allows you to ask those questions because when you Okay. And so the the famous minimalist quote is use use things, love people and as opposed to use people love things. So when you're bringing stuff into your house, when you're shopping before you put something in your cart, think about how this thing is going to serve you, how you're going to use this thing um, and go from there. I think that's, and teaching your children, children that is so important. Um, oh my God, my shopping habits, my ad addiction or my attraction to things right as you learn that from your parents for spending habits um ro from brown is it brown kids she had she was on alex l's podcast and they talked about you know consumerism how we learn our shopping habits how we learn our spending habits how we learn you know how to save and use money from our parents and so the the kind the how you are now affects your children like i'm still unlearning negative behaviors from you know from my parents and how they dealt with money and i think it's so important to question that part of yourself to question um you know what you're bringing into your house what you're bringing and letting your children play with and i think that's the role that minimalism plays and it's really it's not difficult um there's so many little things that you can do and it starts just purging toys. It starts like turning off the TV. It starts like going for a walk. It starts like, I don't know, just being more mindful of what you want your life with your children to be like. We've got about 10 more minutes. Can you guys see me? I know it said reconnecting, so I hope I'm not talking to thin air. Someone give me a holla, a comment, a like. I want to check my phone. Okay, let's check. Okay, so it's not. I'm missing so many comments. Karen says hi. And she's super late. Shannon says, share your passion with your kids. They see you in passion and learn something. Karen okay, says she's so going to have to not. detox her kids from electronics. Good luck, girl. So many comments. All right. There's kind of a little bit of a delay. Let me see. There we go. Hey, Sarah. Yeah, but there's so many things that you can do. Um, simple things that you can do to just kind of engage with your children. They don't have to be newborn from the jump. They can be teens, and you can already introduce mindfulness to them. Um, you, you know, they learn everything from you, from how you spend, how you swipe that card, to how you, how you fold your socks. They're gonna take that all from you, and so being mindful of that is really important. All right, there's definitely a delay, so I'm not seeing everyone's comments as much as I'd like to. This darn canvas is super late. Shannon says, Sherry, I'm 
Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Karen says, I'm going to have to do those. I don't know if I already said this, Karen, but good luck detoxing them. It's not going to, I have problems with switching my phone off. Um, it's hard. Well, I'm not even switching it off, but putting it away from me um, is, is a struggle. And, you know, I definitely don't want my daughter to see me on my phone all the time. So finding that balance is really important. And that's something that I'm working on now. Reading. Reading is a big thing. Reading allowed to your children give them books go to your library it's another thing when we're talking about experiences get memberships to your favorite i'm like a state park lover go to your state to your local state parks go to your zoos go to your gardens i love parks and gardens go to your water park your splash park your pools um there's so many local you don't even travel you don't you don't even have to leave your state. You don't even have to leave your town. You can go camping. You can go to lakes. There's so many things that you can do to kind of get their minds out of, out of, um, out of their screens and into books. Nature journaling is something that I'm really excited to do with Tandiwe once she's older. You know, going places, picking up cool things like pine cones leaves and then coming home and then painting what you found writing about it looking it up finding out what it is there's so many cool things that you can do with your children that you know that are mindful and that don't cost money other than gas or or you know a fee to get into a place so yeah i this thing is not updating in real time making me sad. Nika says she's going to drop links to helpful articles. Thank you, Anika. 10 things parent, every parent should know about play. That looks good. Play is so important, you guys. I, I, I talked about it a little bit, but I was kind of like, I just kind of expected to sit my daughter down and she would play and she'd be good. And then I, once I started doing more research, they really talked about, you know, getting down there and getting dirty with your kids. And that's just so important. Like I said, all my, my, my most fun experiences, my, my dad was with me doing in my childhood. My dad was doing it with me. He was walking with me and showing me stuff. And that's why I think, you know, connecting with nature is so important. And not every, and there's so many, there's wild, if you look up like wild schooling, nature journaling, um, nature pal exchange is this thing where you can like kids in different families ship cool nature. I don't know, like maybe you live by the ocean. So you send shells and other, I don't know, trees and leaves that are native to that area to someone who lives maybe in the opposite climate and you talk about that with your children and then maybe you plan a trip there. Um, I'm a big fan. I really want to rent an RV and drive places and sightsee. That's cheap. Um, there's so many fun things that you can do with your children that aren't extravagant, that don't cost a boatload of money, that don't involve them being glued to a screen. And it gets easier once they get older. It's not as, I know that there's a lot of fear with parents whose children are a little bit older and attached to, you know, items, but just talk to them. Does anyone have any questions? Anika shared a an good article about screen time reality check for kids and parents. There's that app, I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called Moments that checks that tells you how much time you're actually on your phone. And I did it like one day and I was like, I have to, I have to delete this app because it is showing me, you know, something that I'm not quite ready to deal with. Like we are on our phone so much and I have the excuse of being on my phone for work, but also I get on Facebook so much, Twitter so much. And your, your, our kids see that. They see it all the time. Okay. We've got about five more minutes. 
Hi, Jasmine. I think I'm going to end it if you guys don't have any more questions. Thank you so much for the conversation. Comment one more time to see if there's anything that I missed. Um, no, I don't think that there is. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. I believe Kenya will be doing the next um, Facebook Live event that we have. It's going to be so much fun. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at The Black Minimalists. And then our website is blackminimalists.net. You can find me at The Hillbilly African on Instagram and Facebook. I blog about eco-friendliness and mamahood, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much for joining, and y'all have a good night.